And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy some Flask-based microservices and put them in an AWS autoscaling group. And we'll cover the following things. Deploying the Flask-based microservices using a DynamoDB as a document database to store the microservice data. Then we'll use Packer to create an AMI image of that application. Then we'll configure an AWS scaling group uh, using Telerform. And then we will simulate the load of the server uh, and see it scale up and scale back down. Uh, the default rules are that if it's over 60% CPU for a minute, it will add units. If it's below 60% for less than um, for, for five minutes or more, it will scale down. And the minimum number of instances is two, the desired is two, and the maximum is four. So this is a, a quick diagram of what we're going to build. It's in US East 2. We create a, a VPC, add two public subnets across availability zones. The autoscaling group will be responsible for placing those instances in the availability zones based on the load. It's talking to DynamoDB on the back end to store its data. And then on the front, there is an application load balancer. And this is the primary entry point. Uh, when we run the validate script, you'll see exactly what that looks like, a URL for you can, where you can hit these services. So that's what we're going to build. Um, there's some prerequisites. Uh, you need an AWS account, you need an AWS CLI, you need Terraform and Packer. There's also a video uh, that's the same for all my uh, AWS video, Terraform videos. You might want to go look at the AWS Terraform Easy Setup. If you've never set that up, it'll walk through what you need to do in the console, what resources you need to create, and then checks it all. Uh, so I'm assuming that's all been done in this video. So the next step would be to download this code repository. So I'm going to copy that here. I'm going to go to my Ubuntu development environment, and I'm going to do, I've just pasted in. And there we go. We um, called check V, which will go video. And now at this point, like what I can do is I can go apply the script. And we will talk about those phases briefly here. The first phase is we built the infrastructure with the generic launch template. So that's basically everything you see in that diagram gets built in phase uh, one. But there's a dummy uh, launch template that just has the default uh, Amazon Linux OS on it. Um, and then at the end, we go phase two. Phase two is going to use those network elements and create a uh, Flask or an image, an AMI based on the Flask services using Packer. And then once that Packer image is done, what we'll do is we'll splice in that launch template, that AMI into that launch template and set the desired instances to two, minimum to two, and a maximum of four. So when we did the first one, we just set it to zero. And so now we're actually going to scale it up and get it running. So at this point, uh, the build is still happening. What we'll do is we'll pause the video right here. Okay, the build has completed, and what you will notice is that the validation script runs, and it goes and gives you the URL for the um, health check. So I could take that, and copy that, put that in the browser, and I should see it connected. And then if I hit refresh you'll see that it's it's bouncing between the two ec2s that got deployed so it's being load bounced so with that said let's go into the console and take a look as to what got built so most of the things in this exercise gets built in the ec2 section of the console so i'm going to ec2 and the main event is the auto scaling group so i've got the auto scaling group to desired with a min of two and a max of two. Then it's got two different instances deployed and they're across availability zones. Um, so they're up and running and they're healthy. And then if you look at this, it's attached to a, uh, a load balancer. Um, 
Where is the load balancer? The load balancer on this side. And you've got the flask automatic load balancer. It's targeted to the target group. And you can see that it should show the health checks uh, look good. So too healthy. Uh, everything's good to go. Uh, back to the auto, there are the scaling policies that have been configured. So automatic scaling. You'll see that when it goes over 60% for two consecutive periods, so basically a minute, it will add an instance. And then when we do the low, it does the same thing. So we will actually look at that again at, later on. And then the other thing that's in here is the launch templates. You can see this, uh, and that is the AMI that got built. Um, so if I go to AMIs and say owned by me, you can see that's the one that got built by Packer. So what are a couple other things that are in this is the VPC. So if you go look at the VPC, you will see I have a um, VPC that gets created. Last VPC. And you can see it's two subnets. There's a internet gateway and it's attached with a route table to route traffic. The last part is the Dynamo DDB database. And you will see that it has tables. Click on items. Let me see the tables. So there we go. John Smith. It's the only one in there. I'm going to test the services. So what we're going to do is I'm going to clear this. Clear. And I'm going to run validate again. And it's going to go grab that thing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up Postman. Okay. So Postman uh, came up. The get request. Good to go. And you should see the same thing. And again, you'll see it bounce between um, instances. The next thing is there is a candidates endpoint. And that should give me all the candidates. Then there is a candidate endpoint. And I could put John, but it's going to say no bueno, not found. So I do Don Smith. And there we go. And then finally, five users. Just call me one. Now you got to change it to a post because that's the document. If you look at the documentation on the endpoints, that's what you need to do. So I'm going to hit one. I've added one. Uh, homie two. Homie three. East homie five. Now if I go do candidates, it's going to say, and you'll have all the records returned. So I can also go back to the um console and i can go and say explore items tables mm, explore items and you can see now we've got all the the values that i put in there in the document database so not not the most interesting document database but it's, it's just a simple um test so now that we've done that um i think the next step in the presentation is to talk about the load. And so we talked about that briefly, uh, just to go over again, it's on the scaling policy and we've got two instances and we're going to have a scale up at 20 or 60% for a minute and then scale down at 60%, less than 60% for five minutes. So what we want to do is we want to go to our instances also configured SSM on these, so I can go connect. Now I'm going to go to the other one. I want to do instance manager connect. All right. Now if we go to the system manager page, you can see I've gotten a shell. So this is a shell on the actual instance running the Flash services. So you can see it's at zero CPU. So I installed a command uh, called stress. And I'm going to say C2. And I am going to top it. And what you will see is it's now going to 100. And same here. I'm going to top it. At top it. And now it's at 60%. Um, all right, it's 100%. So 
average to be over 60%. So all I gotta do is wait a little bit. And what I should see is on my auto scaling group, you should see my instances burst up. And so this takes uh, several minutes. So I'm gonna pause it and let it burst up and then we'll resume. Okay, so uh, it's been running a while. The stress programs are still running and you'll see my CPU has spiked to average up to 99%. So that should result in some new units being added. So let's go back to auto scaling and let's look at instant management. And you can see that an instance has been added. It's been brought up, it's in a healthy state. And if you look in the activity section, you'll see the alarm fired, the high CPU alarm, and went from three to two, or two to three. So, it, and you, you see that. So it's scaled up based on load. So now what we're gonna do is go back to our uh, things and let's kill um, a job that I did. So uh, foreground controls now, let me exit. Close and let me exit this one and close. And now what we're going to do is let it settle. Okay, I've uh, given it some time and the CPU has settled down back to, to zero. Uh, so you can see that the chart went back down. So if I go into the auto scaling group, you will see I only have two instances. So it's scaled back down to two. And on the activity page, it should say, hey, the low, low stabilization alarm triggered and it was moved back to from three to two. Uh, looks like it actually ended up getting up to four um, and then going back down. So um, you can see it's scaling. Um, it's going to scale and the other solutions are pretty much on the, on the same conditions. So at this point, I think we've covered everything. Um, you know, this project at, at this point, once we run it, I can modify the code. I could modify the, the, uh, I am, I build, then I could rebuild it and make this my own. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to want to destroy everything. So there's a destroy script that you can run. I discovered as I went through this exercise was the uh, the subnets, the subnets are grouped by availability zone, uh, whereas in the other providers, the subnets are, span multiple availability zones. So the reason you would subnet is different. Usually it's by, by function or um, application and not necessarily driven by availability zone. I looked at the resource grouping um, and it's not very good compared to uh, Azure. And I think the other thing that's unique is the uh, settings of the scaling policy. You have a lot more control in AWS as to when it exactly it goes, how, you know, how, when it scales up, when it scales down, um, it just seems much more customizable. The other ones also do the scaling, but it's, it's sort of simplified and we'll go over those when we do those sections.